Hey, it's Rob Jackson with Fandroid.com, and we're here with Sprint's HTC Evo 4G. We're going to do a software review. So first of all, the Evo runs uh, HTC's latest version of Sense on top of Android 2.1. So this is the exact same setup on the HTC Incredible for Verizon. However, the Evo has some unique software characteristics, uh, thanks actually due to its hardware. It has this 1.3 megapixel front-facing camera. It has HDMI video out. And, of course, it has uh, the 4G. It's called the Evo 4G, and it's on Sprint's 4G network. So we're going to dive a little bit into those features in depth but first, let's do a quick roundup of everything Android 2.1 and HTC Sense related, just to kind of catch you up to speed. You can always go back and look at our HTC Incredible review to learn about those things, because they don't really change from uh, the, that phone to this one. So let's just do a quick recap before we look at the Evo-centric and Sprint-centric features of the Evo 4G. One great feature introduced with all Android 2.x phones is Google Navigate, and in this version of Android and HTC Sense, it's called Navigator. You have this easy to use panel of six options. You can see there's voice search for easy use in the car, but if you click on navigation, you can select your starting location and end point and ultimately get turn by turn driving directions. We mentioned voice to text, which is really important with Android 2.1 and the Evo 4G because it brings voice to text to more places. Whether you're writing an email or typing in a text message, you actually don't have to type it, you can just say it. So here we are in a text message, tap to compose, and this little Hello, my name is Rob, and I am trying to text message you. And it should come up pretty flawlessly if you speak clearly. Hello, my name is Rob, and I'm trying to text message you. So there you go. Now you can press enter and send it off without having to bang out a long message uh, using the keyboard. An aesthetically pleasing addition to Android 2.1 was live wallpapers. So you can go ahead and select a live wallpaper, which essentially is an animation going on in the background. Uh, one popular one is this Nexus one, which was started with the Nexus one. You can set the wallpaper, and you can see now in the background you've got these little colors flying every which direction. Now if you press somewhere on the screen, you can see the background reacts to what you're doing. So it's kind of cool and fun. Sometimes it may slow the phone down a bit, but the Evo 4G is really actually pretty darn fast, so it seems to work well even with live wallpapers intact. And of course you've got everything Android has to offer with the market that has 30,000 plus applications in it. Uh, all the Google applications like Talk, Gmail, YouTube, Calendar, and just access and integration to a ridiculous number of cool applications, programs, games, and all that jazz. The new version of HTC Sense brings a lot to the table too. And you can just tell when you swipe down this cool weather animation is just a little taste of what you get. Clearly it is uh, thundering and lightning in Baltimore. In addition to the weather widget, HTC offers a bunch of widgets that look great, function wonderfully, and Android has a bunch by default. HTC keeps adding them though, so you can go ahead and get more HTC widgets and you can see here's a bunch that they've added, coin flip, dice, tip, so these are really cool, functional, and great looking and they come with HTC Sense. For those unfamiliar with HTC Sense, it has seven home screens that you can swipe left and right and now they've got something called helicopter view so you can pinch and zoom and I get a look at all seven screens and I can jump to one really quickly. Now these seven screens make up a scene and you can add scenes, delete scenes, edit scenes, save scenes and have different areas and groupings of seven screens for different scenarios and times in your life or day or week or whatever. We mentioned pinch and zoom and that is available in the browser of the Evo 4G so you can see this nice little uh, snapping to the screen size of the text how it wraps uh, but you can pinch to zoom which is a really nice feature when you're trying to resize the screen uh, around a certain element. We've also got flash running on the Evo 4G as you can see in the right hand sidebar with this flash banner running on Fandroid. Another cool feature is enhanced copy and paste functionality. So if I hold down on text, it'll bring up this little window where I can move these pinpoints and select exactly what I want. We'll just select this sentence so I can select the beginning and the end wherever I want to and then copy and paste much easier. 
The key widget in HTC's new version of Sense is FriendStream, which consolidates all your social networks into one place where you can find out what's going on with your friends, family, really on Facebook, Twitter, uh, and picture sharing sites, and a bunch of other social networks. So this is HTC's version of their social networking. Another great feature is the FM radio, which only works if you have your 3.5 millimeter headset jack plugged in, but once you do, you can get local radio stations, and it's really cool to be on the go and be able to listen to local radio wherever you are. So what about the killer software features that make the Evo 4G better than other Android phones out there? I'm talking about the front-facing camera for video chat, HDMI video out for connecting your phone to your TV and watching HD content on a big screen, not to mention that you can record video in HD using the phone. And custom Sprint applications like Sprint Football Live, Sprint Navigation, Sprint TV. I am disappointed to tell you we can't offer you a full review of all the features, like the front-facing video camera, for example. This was announced with Quick, which will enable you to pretty much have live video chat with a friend or whoever you want to call. That application isn't going to be live until the Evo 4G is available for sale on June 4th, so we're unable to test it. Uh, however, if you do go to the camera, and right now it's taking a picture of whatever is over there using this 8 megapixel camera, so if we put the Motorola Droid back here, you can see that's what it's taking a video of, but if I press menu and I go to settings, I can switch the camera to the front camera. There I am. What's going on? <laughs> As I said in the hardware review, this is going to totally change the art of the self-pick. I can just perfectly pick my pose. The difference here is that developers are going to have access to this camera, so they'll be developing cool applications for it. We already have seen uh, what Quick expects to do with the live video chat, but I would expect developers to come up with some pretty cool uses of the front-facing video camera and integrate them into their applications and into new applications. I think we'll see this front-facing camera on a lot more phones. You can see it hardly takes up any space, but it adds a new level of functionality to the phone. And before, I mean, a front-facing video camera was a cool idea, but the problem was the network speeds. It was just not fast enough. The phones weren't fast enough. They didn't have the reliability to offer that video streaming where the video was a good enough quality and it went fast enough. There was a huge delay and lag in the video, and it just wasn't realistic. But now with Sprint's 4G network, uh, at least we're hoping, uh, and combined with the power of Android and third-party developers, uh, that we're going to be able to use this video chat in a new and meaningful and powerful way. Now this video chat is a lot smoother and more powerful when you have Sprint's 4G network at work for you. Uh, it's only available in certain cities right now, but when this 4G network is working and humming along, it works flawlessly. The speeds are ridiculously fast. You're loading video on YouTube in high quality ridiculously fast. It's just really fast and it's great, and I expect it to be great for video chat as well. Uh, but it was a little spotty in my test. Now I'm going to run a speed test so you can see the exact, you know, difference between Sprint's 4G network, the 3G network, and maybe, you know, another network uh, or on my, you know, Comcast router. But 4G speeds were uh, pretty, very good at the top. Uh, mediocre and spotty though, a little bit. And of course it depends what city you're in uh, if you're going to get the coverage. One of my favorite features in conjunction with the 4G network, and you don't need 4G in order to do this, but Sprint Hotspot, you can turn your phone into a wireless router and connect up to eight devices to it. You've got a phone there, um, you've got a laptop, a netbook, an iPad, whatever. You can connect up to eight devices or your friends and family can connect as well. So I've tested this and it worked really well. Um, when you're stationary, it works a whole lot better when you're in a car. And of course, when you're in a car, you're also traveling in and out of service areas at times. Uh, but it worked tremendous with me. Uh, pretty good on 3G and amazing on 4G. But I'll just show you how you connect. First of all, you've got your router name. Uh, so that was in there by default for me. You've got your security. I've got the password in there just as 12345678910, which was set at default. And you can manage users. So this will tell you who's connected um, and what devices and whatnot. And turn it on, we'll just press that, and it will start the router up. And you can see that it's ready, so let's go ahead and connect our laptops. 
All right, I've got my laptop here. I'm running Sprint Mobile Hotspot with 4G on the Evo, as you can see. And we are going to connect really quickly. In the bottom right-hand corner, there's the Evo network. Connect. And it should pop right up, right up. So let's go ahead and see. We've got five bars on it. We'll do a quick Google search for Fandroid. And looks like it brings us right to the site and loads up pretty quickly. Uh, let's go to a. Here we go. Let's go to the Evo ad and let's see how quickly video loads on the 4G using the hotspot feature. So this is the first commercial for the Evo. First is the beginning. So that's pretty darn good. And of course my laptop is just getting the connection from the Evo. Now you can connect up to eight devices at a time. If you scroll down here, you can see there's one managed connected user and it shows who it is, Rob IdeaPad, that's my laptop, so it'll show you who's there, uh, and before we had two people connected to it, but you can connect up to eight at a time. So the hotspot feature is really cool, we'll show you some speed tests too, uh, in a different video, so check that out, but mobile hotspot feature, love it, and if, you're, if you like to do work on the go, stuff like that, you're going to love it too. So one feature we're not fully able to explore is the HDMI video out on the bottom. And you can see this is a micro uh, HDMI video out. It connects directly into the HDMI um, input of an HD capable television. So you can actually uh, plug your phone into your TV and see what would be on your screen, whether it's just a regular screen or whether it's, uh, you know, you're playing a game and you want to play the game and watch on your television. Um, or whether you have HD movies stored on your SD card and you want to watch the movie on your television or show a bunch of people a YouTube clip in HD, whatever, you can connect it to its TV and watch it on this, uh, I mean, the 4.3 inch screen is a big, beautiful screen, but, you know, connect it to a 50 inch screen and, and, and watch it on there. So that's a pretty cool feature. What makes it even cooler is that if you go into the camera here, you can see that I can switch over to video and in the settings you can set the resolution to 720p so this records in HD so you can actually record an you know something going on in HD on your uh, on your camcorder on your phone on your Evo and then you can connect it with the HDMI out to your television and view video that you recorded on your phone in HD quality on a big screen television, which is, I think, really, really, really cool. Unfortunately, these cords aren't in high demand yet. Not many devices have these little micro HDMI port, uh, so you can't find them in brick and mortar stores, and they haven't really started selling accessories for the Evo 4G yet since it does not um, for a few days when the, this review had been done. So we're not fully able to test the functionality, but we're guessing it's going to be really um, a cool, interesting feature that might, you know, everybody might not use and people who do use it might not use it a ton, but when you do, it's a really cool feature. Speaking of the camera, we went in depth with the camera, which is the same camera that's on the Incredible, and it has the ability to take some great pictures with this 8 megapixel camera with the dual LED flash there. Uh, there are a ridiculous amount of settings that you can configure, whether it's brightness, um, contrast, saturation, sharpness. It's great to have those features. It'd be nice to have some quick options for different times of the day. So if you're in a pinch and you only have one opportunity to take one great picture of something happening right at that instant, the Evo 4G isn't going to replace the point-and-shoot camera uh, because you do have to play around with the settings to ensure a perfect picture. But overall, the picture has the potential to take great photos and we'll show you some of the pictures we took uh, and the videos we took with that HD uh, quality video